Well, let me ask you this. Are you expecting? Now, I don't mean are you pregnant. I'm asking a very simple question here that asking, are you looking for something? Are you envisioning something in your life? Are you believing it to be so? What are you expecting? There was a young man who decided to go ice fishing one day. And he gets up at 2 a.m. and he's got all of his tools ready. He arrives with his saw and he begins to saw that hole in the ice in a strategic spot just where he thought, I'm going to catch fish. He's out there with great determination. And all of a sudden, he hears a voice in the background. It's echoing all through. And he said, wait, there are no fish under the ice here. Ooh. So looking around, well, what? who's, what? I don't see anyone. Where's this voice coming from? Well, he just goes back to sawing away at that hole in the ice, and he's thinking, okay, and this is going to be a perfect day of fishing. I'm here out early in the morning, and it's going to be a wonderful experience. And suddenly, the voice again. There are no fish under the ice there. Wow, the dude says, could this be God? Is this God telling me? Is this God giving me guidance? Whoa, I'm going to fish like crazy. This is going to be fantastic. And so he decides, well, maybe I need to move over a little bit more. Maybe that's the guidance. And he starts sawing another hole in the ice, thinking, okay, this is going to be a great day. God is guiding me. He carves away, and suddenly, sir, this is the rink manager. There is no fish under the ice here. Okay. So he wasn't expecting that, right? He wasn't expecting it at all. So I'd like to ask you in your life, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? Are you expecting guidance? Are you expecting something good? Are you expecting God? Because so often in our life, we lack any kind of expectation within our journey of our lives. And too often in the midst of a challenge, in the midst of a hardship, we don't even expect God to show up because we're so caught up in the hardship. We're so caught up in the challenge. We're so caught up in the problem. We wouldn't even know if the solution was there. We wouldn't know that God had shown up. You see, if we're not expecting it, sometimes we go through challenges of life and we feel so powerless. We feel like, you know what, I'm in this all alone. All I can think about is how difficult life is. And all I can think about is how hard this is going to be to go through this challenge and how it, you know, strenuous and how taxing it's going to be on my life, never thinking, you know, God will make a way when there seems to be no way. And never thinking, wow, the presence of God is with me right now. And never thinking, I feel God right here in this moment. You see, sometimes we haven't been expecting God to show up, and we're not expecting the goodness of God. We're not expecting that guidance and direction. We're not expecting anything to happen within our life because we're just thinking we're in this physical world on all of its tribulation and all of its challenges and all of its hardships. That's all I can see and all I can focus on. But today I'm asking you to begin to expect something miraculous, new, unfolding within your life. I want you to expect God to show up. I expect God to show up. I expect God's guidance. I expect God's presence. I expect God's power. It is here. It is now right in this moment. God is here, and I expect it. There's a beautiful passage in the book of Acts chapter 10. It's the story of Peter who was so hungry and had an appetite. Oh, I'm not going to talk about food because I know you all, you're, to, you're looking at your clock thinking it's almost lunch or brunch or whatever it may be. But he's hungry. And so he goes up on the rooftop thinking, well, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And so he's there praying, but I'm sure his stomach's growling. He's there praying, and he's hungry, and he kind of goes into a trance. You know how you kind of drift off in prayer? Not in church. No, no, no. I'm sure you, none of you do that. But you may drift off in your prayer life at home, right? You drift off into this trance, and suddenly in this dream state, there appears a blanket coming down from the heavens. And in that blanket are all these non-kosher meats that are there. They are all these four hoofed animals and things that would be against any kind of Jewish tradition and law of kosher eating. And there's a voice saying, take and eat. 
kill and eat. And oh, no, 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 Peter says, I can't do any of that. No, no, that's not it. And suddenly the blanket comes down again. Again, this voice says, take and eat. Peter, no, no, I, I can't eat any of this. It's not kosher. I can't, it's not in my diet. It's not going to work for me. I, no, I can't. Again, the blanket drops a third time. And there again, all of that which is seemingly unkosher is there for him. And the voice saying, take and eat. And he says, I can't. And all of a sudden, it's this voice that's simply saying, don't call what I've made pure impure. Peter wasn't expecting that. Peter wasn't expecting. Wait a minute. Peter's in prayer, and he's not expecting to hear from God? Isn't that so much like you and I? Isn't that our story? Sometimes we go to prayer, and we're not even expecting God to speak to us because we're so busy. God, did you know this? And God, I got to tell you this. And God, maybe you don't understand, but I'm going through this problem. And God, don't you understand? I'm sick. Or God, I've got these financial problems. And we go on and on. And we're so yik, 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 yik. We're not even expecting God to speak. We're not even expecting God to even show up. Because we're so busy talking to God. Yet it is in the silence, in the stillness. Be still and know. Be still and know God. Be still and allow God to reveal. Be still and allow God to speak, to minister to God. Well, he's waiting for lunch and he's in prayer, but he was not expecting God to show up in this way, so he's struggling with God's guidance. And in that moment, suddenly there are three Gentiles that knock on the door, and they are seeking spiritual teaching and calling out for Peter to come and Peter stops for a moment and says in this passage from Acts chapter 10, you are well aware that it's against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile. We don't mess with you all, you know. We don't go and hang out with you. You know, we don't interact with you. You're different. You think differently. Your outlook is different. You're not like us. You know, we kind of hang with our own little clique and our own people. We don't mix. Do you understand that? But he says, but God has shown me. God showed up and showed Peter something. God showed up and began to reveal something to him. God showed up and began to give some guidance to him. And he says, God has showed me I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came, I'm going to come to you without any kind of objection. You may ask why. Why I'm coming? Because I understand this wonderful truth. Now I realize it says in Acts chapter 10, how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts everyone from every nation and anyone who fears him and does what is right. Wow. What a revelation. What a game changer for Peter. What a game changer for each and every one of us. We're in prayer. God showed up to say, there is no favoritism. We need not judge. We need not condemn. We need not distance ourselves from anyone or any being or anything because God is in it all. God is all. And God is in all. And God works through all. And when we understand this, we understand this wonderful guidance for the journey of our lives. So when we go to prayer and when we're expecting God to guide, God to guide us, you know what? There are no surprises. Now, this was a big surprise for Peter because he wasn't expecting God in this moment. He was thinking about his food, his stomach. He was thinking about prayer like, oh, yeah, God bless me, you know, and all this. He wasn't really focused and expecting God to guide and direct his life. How about it when we are expecting something or expecting someone? You know how things change for us in the journey of our life? My daughter would fly into Atlanta. She, her, mother, her mother worked for Delta Airlines, and coming out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, she could grab a plane faster than you could hail a taxi cab. She would jump on board planes and say, you know, my kids would say, hey, Dad, I'm going to come in on the 9 o'clock flight. Can you give me 25 bucks? Uh, and I'll be going home on the clock flight tonight. 
I'm going to pop in just for the day. Can you give me some money? Uh, can you help me out, Dad? Can I get a haircut? Can you do this? Yes. Well, that's what dads do. And she would be saying, texting me, Dad, I'm coming in. I've landed. Oh, you know, if you've been to the Atlanta airport, you get there uh, at the uh, arrival destination place, at baggage claim, and there's an escalator in front of you. All these people are coming up. They're all coming up the escalator. And you're looking through the crowd with such great expectation. And you are looking with such, it, such extreme attention and focus. And there may be distractions all around you, people talking, people hugging, people meeting their arriving guests, announcements over the loudspeaker going on. But you know what? I'm looking for my daughter, and I'm focused. And my attention is, is she coming up the escalator? Is that her? Is, oh, no, that's not her. Oh, is she coming up now? And I'm so filled with expectation of her showing up that when she comes into view, there's this rush of recognition. <gasps> there she is. Yes, there she is. Well, that's what our spiritual life should be on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm looking for God. God, show it up right now. God's right here. God's guiding me and speaking to me and telling me exactly what I need and for this moment, this hardship, this trial I'm going through. God's making a way because God has shown up and God is here. And I have this expectation that I recognize with such joy that it fills my life, a rush of recognition of the presence of God. I recognize it here, now, in this moment. God has shown up. You see, then we're not surprised at all. We're not surprised when God guides us. We're not shocked at all when the miracle happens because it's not a miracle, it's a normal. That's right. It's God just doing what God does. Because we're expecting, because we're anticipating, because we're recognizing in each and every moment, God is here. God has shown up. God is at work. The presence of God is right here, and I feel it. I can sense it. Because here's one of our big challenges. You know, we often don't even know how to sense the presence of God. We've forgotten. We've been so distracted because we're not familiar with what that presence even feels like. We bought into all these teachings of the world around us and the more conservative fundamentalist approaches, which are so filled with judgment and condemnation, a God who's out there to punish you. A God who's always watching and looking at you. Mm, I see a mistake. I see an error. I see something. I'm going to judge you. I'm going to withhold from you. I'm going to keep anything from you of blessings. Or how about this one? You need to plead and beg with me before I'll answer. We think that's our God. We think, and we've got this kind of crazy idea. So we're not familiar with this divine presence of God that is simply love. That's right. What God is, is love. It's just love. Simply love. And love wants the highest and best for each and every one. Love does not have conditions in saying, I'll love you if, I'll love you when, I'll love you if you shape up, if you do X, Y, and Z, I'll love you if you tithe, or I'll love you if you come to church. No, just the pastor will do that. But no, I'm just saying, uh, everybody, I'll love you. You see, God is there unconditionally that will love you in this simplicity enough that it feels, that's right, it feels like what? What's love feel like? Joy. Joy like a fountain. Joy like a fountain. Peace like a river. Oh, love like an ocean. That's exactly what it's all about. And when we understand that, we begin to comprehend, I know what the presence of God feels like. It feels like joy. It feels like peace. It feels like love that is so intense, so vast, like a great ocean around us. And when we begin to comprehend that, we can go through every single day within our life. I know what the presence of God feels like. I want you to do that right now. Just feel the presence of God. You sang, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome. But to really be welcome to that wonderful presence, we have to open our hearts to say, I also feel that Holy Spirit right here and now. I feel that divine presence. Breathe in right now and feel perfect peace. That's right.
right? Take a deep breath and feel joy like a fountain. Breathe in and feel right now the vast, immense love like an ocean. You see, when we become so accustomed, then we begin with the divine understanding of God and who and what God is. We then can be those people that can sense God's presence because this presence is an unjudging presence. It's this unconditional love. It's not there to judge you. How silly that would be when God says, I give you free will, go ahead and choose whatever, and then I'm going to judge you, and I'm going to say, well, see, I told you you had all kinds of chance to choose whatever you want, but dagnabbit, you didn't choose my choice. But the unjudging, unconditional love says, I love you through whatever choice you've made in life. I still love you. I give you the opportunity to make all kinds of choices. And in each choice, love doesn't change. It doesn't say there's more love with that choice and less love with this choice. It's an unjudging sense and presence. And what happens is also that we have to understand that we've got to pay attention. Once we understand and sense what this presence is all about, we've got to pay attention to this presence. It's this presence that wants to nudge us, us and kind of push us or tap us on the shoulder. The presence that's wanting to ever guide us and lead us and direct us. That's truth. But sometimes we're not paying attention, and I think we become like Peter, who was really dreaming more about food and thinking food consciousness rather than thinking God revealing, God guiding, God teaching, God creating a game changer for Peter. Let me tell you this. When you pay attention, God is creating a game changer for your life. New direction, new outlook, new attitudes, new uh, uh, expressions of understanding the divine at work within your life. There's game changers happening every time you're fully aware and you're paying attention to this divine presence at work within your life. This presence of God may be nudging you, tapping on your shoulder, sometimes even pushing you a little bit, uh huh, pushing you to get through something, to help you through what you're going through, to help you to get to the other side. So pay attention. And when you pray, expect to hear God. Did you pray today expecting to hear the voice of God? Because let me tell you, the voice of God is ever speaking. One thing about God. God never shuts up, you know, and that's in a good way. There's never this kind of like, God, I didn't hear from you. Are you out there? God, are you speaking? God, what's going on? Because the voice of God is ever unfolding the goodness, ever desiring to speak to you. So when you pray and you pay attention, saying, I'm listening, I'm listening, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place, and I invite you to speak right here and now to me, unfolding inside wisdom, direction for my life. You then begin to change your whole prayer life that says, I'm pausing, I'm listening, I'm in the silence, and I've included silence in my prayer life because I expect to hear from God. You see, when you practice that presence and you get familiar with that presence of God, something else happens is you begin to see that presence in everything and everyone. You begin to understand that, wow, that presence is here in me, and that presence is in you and you. And that presence is that in that person who didn't use their turn signal on Interstate 85 and should change a lane right in front of me. Yes, the presence of God is in them too. Yes, you see, the presence of God is in everything and everyone. And when you become comfortable with paying attention and recognizing it, you begin to see it in all kinds of things, in all kinds of ways. So I'm going to invite you right now, look around the room. Look at someone else. The presence of God is there. The presence of God is here. The presence of God is in you, around you, working for you. And begin to see it and say, I see God in you. Stop seeing the world and its physical manifestations. Stop seeing, oh, you know, what they're wearing and what they look like. Because, honey, that doesn't look like God to me. You know, and we kind of in our judgments. You know, we look at all kinds of crazy things in our world. But we look deep within the heart and soul of one another and say, I see God. I see good. 
I see love. I see peace. I see joy. And it's in you. And we begin to acknowledge it. Let me tell you this. One last thing. Very important. You know that presence we're talking about that we pay attention to, that we want to acknowledge, we want to be comfortable with, we want to allow to speak to us, guide to us, guide us. You know what? It's always with you. That's right. It's always with you. The scriptures, lo, I am with you always. That doesn't mean down here. Uh-uh. Doesn't it means always wherever you are. You know? That's why people say, I don't like to skydive. Because the presence of God is lo, I'm with you. Get it? Boom, boom. Okay. No. It's not a distance. It's not an elevation. It means surely. Surely, without a doubt, the presence of God is always with you, even to the end of the age, right here with us. That presence is with you when you may not even know or recognize or really ready to acknowledge, but God showed up. God was there. There was a TV show, a nature show. There were two cubs being born, a mother bear giving birth to two sweet Newborn baby cubs. And unfortunately, in the birth process, one of the cubs died. And the mother bear died. Leaving that single cub all alone to journey through the wilderness. Now, quite often, a newborn bear, a little cub like this, could be easily prey for a predator. Something that might come and attack it something that might kind of take advantage of its naivete and its youth and its childlike behavior as this little cub. But one day, the little cub encounters a giant bear. Seeing the cub alone, this giant bear rises up and roars in a papa bear way. And realizing that cub has no one, no protector, no guide. So that papa bear in this TV show is caring for that little cub and showing that little cub the ropes of life, how to fish and how to uh, yield off of any kind of advances and how to be this roaring big bear beast one day that could conquer anything. Somehow in the story of the show, papa bear and the baby cub got separated and the baby cub was by the stream, kind of entertained by the waters, and there appeared a mountain lion. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I'm watching this show. Please don't tell me that the mountain lion's going to eat that cub. This is an entertainment. What's, what's going on in the show? And suspense rises up as you're on the edge thinking, what's going to happen to this cub as the mountain lion comes in approaching, getting closer and closer and closer? And you're thinking, wait a minute, come on, baby cub, come on, baby cub. Look behind you. Don't you see that mountain lion's about ready to devour you? And all of a sudden, that Mountain lion gives a roar, and that baby cub does what it thinks it knows what to do from Papa Bear's instruction and rises up and shows its snarly teeth and gives out uh, a little whimper cry. <sighs> Wasn't very intimidating to that mountain lion. But all of a sudden, the mountain lion runs away. And the baby bear think, uh, thinking, well, I showed him. Yeah, I got this down pat. The little cub didn't realize it. Behind him was Papa Bear. Papa Bear rising up. Papa Bear rising up and snarling with his teeth. Papa Bear giving that approach to the mountain lion. And the mountain lion going, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to rethink this. I'm going to retreat. And I'm going away. The little cub never knew Papa Bear was behind him. The little cub didn't understand the father was there. So often in life when we're facing adversarial conditions and problems and challenges, we don't realize behind us, God showed up. I'm telling you, too many times in my life, I've been there. And I know, even though I'm looking over my shoulder, where is God? Where is God? God showed up and defeated the adversary, and took away the challenge, and removed the obstacle, and took away that which 
be the predator or that which may devour me in the world's ideas. Just knowing God shows up. You know, today I want to invite you to not only know it, but to feel it. To know that God is there for you. Lo, I am with you always. Surely I am with you always. My presence is with you always. You can expect that I am there. I want you to know that, and I want you to feel it. Because when you know and you feel, you ignite something powerful called faith. And that's at work in your life. So today, I want you to know, you can expect it. Are you expecting God to show up today? Why not? God's here. But if you expect it, you'll begin to see it. God's guidance is here for you right now. God's presence is here for you. God's power is here for you. Everything you need is here for you now. Let's begin. I am expecting God right now. Amen.